So hello, it's Mr. Spracklin here, and I am here with one of our wonderful grandparents. Good evening, Annie. Good evening, Mr. Spracklin. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, because today we've asked you to come in and just explain and share um, a project that you've been working on with us that many of the children may have spotted in the corridors. Um, do you want to give a bit of context of what yes, we're looking at here? Yes, uh, what Mr. Spracklin asked me to do after the world, it was a bit of a daunting task. Uh, so I thought I'd narrow it down to perhaps something the children had, had learned about, like Aboriginal art, which is there, uh, dragon art and Chinese, and we've also done um, stuff on, on Indian culture as well. So, um, and also to show that um, art can be plain and simple, or it can be as complex as you want. So in the top right hand corner here, we've got some Aboriginal art, and that took a long time. That, piece, that did take it? a long time, and I'm afraid I haven't got the patience of a truly Aboriginal artist, <laughs> so it's, it's more like a, um, a representation. Um, it's very complex. It looks simple, but it's very complex with different shading of dots and, and things like that. And um, the hand represents a settlement. The, the symbols represent people who have been around that settlement, and the darker bits are rivers. And um, by a true Aboriginal artist, I should imagine it would take years, but um, I didn't have that time. <laughs> it's a wonderful piece. In the bottom right hand corner here? That's, that's Picasso, and that was, I thought I would do that so that the children could see that um, you don't have to represent a face exactly as it looks. Um, it's, it's deconstructed, but it's very simple colours as well, and very a very bold sort of striped background. But it, it's recognisable as a human face, despite the fact it's not. Um, and in the centre here, we've got a bespoke piece of pottery that the children worked on previously. So Annie has worked around this after it was installed. And this piece was commissioned to commemorate the time that Mrs. Johnson, our former deputy head, spent at the school. And uh, there's lots of um, tiles that the children pr painted themselves. So that kind of sits in the centre of this. And if we go round, we've got a very special Chinese dragon here. <laughs> yes, the Chinese dragon represents power and strength. And um, my grandchildren told me all about their, their dragon moments at school and finding a dragon on the roof and, and dragon eggs and goodness knows what. So I was pleased to be able to put a, a Chinese dragon in there. Um, the writing should say, according to Mr Google, uh, the greatest school on earth, uh, um, but it could equally school, say egg it? fried rice, so <laughs> I, but I assume it's the greatest school on earth. That uh, is wonderful, <laughs> and then we've got some beautiful scenes up here. Yeah, this is this is Japanese blossom art. Japanese blossom art is is very it's very simple. It's just simple marks um, and it, a background that wouldn't be a, a usual background, but it conveys whatever you want to see in it. It's, it could be a lake in front of a mountain, it could be a fog with trees sticking through, it could be anything, but it's very simple blocks of one completely different colour in order to make some And then in the corner here. Mexican art. Some Mexican flowers. Um, stylized flowers, always bright, colourful Mexican art with, with the usual black that they seem to like in, in Mexican art. Um, and going up to the top here. Uh, this one is African art, which African artists um, don't necessarily do a subject, they do what they feel and, and, and about, about things. So this is about a breakup, um, which is sad, and lots of children noticed they were sad, and the more observant ones noticed the middle was a bottle that was cracked, <laughs> uh. indicative of a breakup. So they were very interested in, in that one in particular. Two birds up here, though. Yes, yeah, one representing the female and the other the male, uh, also sharing because they've broken up. The uh, lotus I had to put in because that's uh, a symbol of purity and strength, which I thought summed up the school ethos very nicely and all its stuff. Look at it. And then over here. And this is the Indian art. This is simple. This is gond art, which is very uh, vibrant colours at, at one with, with nature. Uh, simple but intertwined uh, in, in contrast to the very, very ornate one, which is originally um, done in ink, free drawing in ink, but obviously I couldn't do ink on a wall, so it's acrylic paint. <laughs> and that brings us a full circle around this beautiful mural that's been installed by a wonderful, talented grandparent here. Thank you so much, Annie, for doing this beautiful yeah. piece of work. And thank you for sharing what each element represents, because I think that links not only really well to our art curriculum, um, that we study here at the Prince of Wales School, but also to our geography curriculum in particular, where we've got that 
journey around the world. So next time you walk down the corridor children at Prince of Wales School, have a little closer look about what's on the wall.